How's it going everybody? Today we're looking at signals, um, Linux process signals more specifically. Um, a Linux process signal, if you're not familiar with it, it is a signal that you send towards a process to tell it to do something. In most cases, the one you might be most familiar with is to kill a process. Where you have something that maybe you're having trouble telling it to stop, or it's just running in the background, and you'll send a signal to kill it. Um, so maybe you've actually seen the command kill, and that's for sending a process. Though if we actually look at the kill command, we'll see it's more than a sending a kill signal. Even though it says, send, um, so it's called kill. I believe it was originally made for killing things, but it says to send a pro signal to a process. And there's a lot of signals out there. So right here, it's a list of signals that your kill command knows of. Your computer might actually have a bit more. Um, for example, the kill command actually knows of the signal uh, 20 um, sig stop stp there's another one called stop um, it's probably somewhere on this list All right here 19 and I believe my signal header file in my library on my computer doesn't actually know of this one so as a macro for all the other ones except this which is fine because you can still type in 20 manually and it'll work and to note I was looking at the man 7 page for signal there's also a man2, which is the, the default one that'll appear. And this is actually going to go over the C library for using signal that we're going to be looking at some code of. So my tmux, I'll start this process. Um, top, it's kind of small, but top it'll show what's running and it can show the PID for it. So we're going to use this as an example. Let's do kill9, which is the same thing as kill from what we saw on our list. So 9 is sig kill. So we can do kill dash 9, or we can do kill uppercase 9. And then if we have the process ID for top, we can actually go ahead and kill it. PS is another thing similar to top that lets you find what's running. We'll grab top. And here's the actual command that's running. This right here is the process ID for what just ran. So we'll just do kill dash 9, process ID. And as you can see, this was killed on this side so it is no longer running let's clear that up we're going to write some C code I actually have the code already written or be copying and pasting it I was kind of thinking that might be the best way to do this because it's a bit of code um, it's not a ton so let's include some libraries um, here's a signal library and like I mentioned the signal library in my example doesn't have the STP and that's because I'm thinking the macro is not in there and we'll create this main function let's do int main and let's return zero at the end and in the main function let's print out the process ID so that way we don't have to actually find it and it makes it a lot easier for us to be calling something towards this and we'll just have an infinite loop and just to give it to something to do let's cause it to sleep now let's compile this and we'll output it as signal and let's run that so now it's running in the background, or not the background, it's here in the foreground, but it's doing nothing other than sleeping. We can say kill dash, and let's say to stop. That's the same equivalent of doing 19. And let's give it this process ID. Right there, it stopped, and we're back into our command prompt. If we go back to the foreground, we're actually back into this command. And that's equivalent of doing control Z, we're stopping it. And in here, we do kill, continue, let's paste that in. And we're continued back into here. Uh, my Tmux was being a little funky, but we'll ignore that. And now let's go back in here and kill it again. So just like that, and now it's actually killed. So it's as simple as that. Let's go ahead and jump back into our code and continue from there. So the signals library allows you to create a, we'll call it a signal action. And the signal action basically says when this signal is called, this exact signal, um, call this handler function. So you can rewrite all of the signals. Um, with that said, you can't rewrite the signal for kill. Um, no matter what, the kill signal arrives, it's closing down everything. Um, you can't take over that. And I guess that's for a variety of reasons. Um, but you don't want someone to write something malicious that doesn't allow you to kill the process. 
So right here, I'll just dump in some code, as I mentioned, and basically what this code is, I create this structure of the SIG action. Um, we're gonna loop through a list of signals that we have yet to define, and we're gonna set a handler to the signals handler. Um, we're setting the SIG empty set, that's for the mask, and the flags are setting to nothing. And we're just trying to catch an error right here. If there's an error, we'll just say, there's an error, we can print out the signal name and let's return one. And then down here, we're actually gonna loop through it again, just one more time. And we're gonna print off all the handlers for all the signals that were defined. Now that we actually have that, let's go ahead and find a struct that's gonna keep track of some of the information about the signals. The struct will pass in a number, but to make it a little bit easier to read, we'll also have a string or a char obviously, and then we're gonna have a handler function. And we're passing it in. The handler function can take in an integer. The integer itself is actually just going to be the signal that's being called. And we'll have a description as well. Um, this one's probably the one that's least needed. And if you had a header file, I guess we would put some of this information in the header file, um, but we'll just pass in the signal handler function that's right here. We'll define it afterwards. And here is our list of some signals that we're gonna to try to keep track of. So there's the interrupt signal. Um, it's usually from control C. I guess if you're on a Mac, it, maybe it's command C. Or maybe in the terminal, actually, the Mac does control for a lot of things. Um, sig term, sig user one and two. User one and two actually user defined signals. Um, they have no purpose other than you creating a handler for them. Uh, we'll do sig alarm, and that's basically an alarm that's set the alarm has to be set within the process itself. You can't have a process outside doing an alarm. Um, and here's SIG stop. Uh, mine actually wasn't working with the actual SIG stop. Um, it was basically the same thing with SIG kill. It wasn't allowing me to do it. And then there's a SIG continue and a SIG uh, segmentation um, problem. Um, it's not SEG fault. Uh, I can't remember exactly what this V stands for off the top of my head. Uh, violation is actually what it is. So as you can see, we have the SIG handler, but some of these we have our own predefined functions. Um, but for now, let's just uh, use the SIG handler function. So it received the signal, and these ones that are predefined, let's close these ones out so it compiles correctly. Same with this one. Looks like I might have missed one. Oh. If I can see where the line begins. Okay. I guess this is a warning. Uh, get sig index. Oh, that's actually a function that I have forgot to copy it in. My bad. Um, so this function is actually just going to look through the signal uh, array to make sure that it's getting the correct index. I just thought that was the easiest way for me to do it. Now signals. So it shows the registered signals that we have handlers for. Their sig term. 15, 10, and 12, so we can go ahead and actually run these on here. And there's our process ID. So now, if we were to run, let's jump over here, kill-term, paste in that process ID, it says received. Um, and that's because we have the handler function is basically just receiving it. Uh, the term function is doing nothing. Um, it's not acting what usually would have happened. And we'll jump in here, we can do control C to escape out of there. And control C is one of the signals that we're about to look at actually, um, that we're not handling. So we do right here, that's an interrupter signal. And if we were to handle it, we have this new signal that I have. And I actually have a bunch of signals that are gonna go together with each other. So there's the alarm signal, we're setting alarm for one second. And I'm also running the signal handler just so we can print out that it's received some information. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy in the rest of these handlers that I wrote, and we'll go over what they'll do.
So the plan is the interrupter signal. You press control C and it's actually going to set an alarm. It's going to wait one second and the process is going to pick up the alarm and we're basically just going to run uh, SIG stop. And stop, nothing's going to work until we continue it. So from up over here we're going to set a continue and when it receives continue we're going to cause a segmentation violation and the segmentation violation it's going to pick it up and we're going to send in an actual signal just using the kill command. Um, we're going to say sig kill. Um, and actually the stop that we're picking up is this stop um, because for whatever reason my stop wasn't working but once we call this stop it's going to call it to here. So it's, we're going to get this violation and that's going to actually end the script. So let's go ahead and actually try this out. Let's compile it and we're missing a lot up here. That's uh, what happens when two things reference each other. Something needs to be defined before. So there it is. All right. So there we can see we have a lot more things going on. If we were to do the interrupt, as we had saw in the code, the interrupt will cause the alarm. So let's go ahead and do control C and the alarm happened. And then because the alarm happened, we know it caused it to stop. So now let's go over here. We'll do kill dash. And I believe continue is the next one we have. Let's copy this process ID. And there it received the continue. Um, the continue caused a seg violation. And it didn't show it. I just pressed enter. And I'm pressing enter and was able to clear my feed, uh, my output. And it shows this process was killed. So that's a pretty random way, a chain of events, to show an example of all the processes handling each other. Um, you just write this function, use this SA handler, basically just to set which handler for each single process that you want to handle, and it's going to call on that function. I hope this was a very, uh, um, not so brief, I wanted to be able to show you the code, but I hope this was a good simple tutorial that you guys were able to follow along with. If you guys are very interested in seeing how to do this in other languages, I'm sure I can make another video in the future showing how to do that. My friend had suggested this video. He thought it was a good idea. If you guys have other suggestions, feel free to leave it below in the comments and free, feel free to share any of your thoughts. I have some other videos on the way. Um, of course, I'm pretty busy with work um, and things like that. Uh, I, I'm going to be having a kid soon, so I guess I have a lot of things changing in my life. So I've been kind of stepping back and forth from YouTube, but this is something I kind of want to get back into. So I hope you guys really enjoy the video and see you guys again next time.